I think my first angelic encounter was at the age of seven. I will never forget that. Then the second angelic encounter was at the age of 13. That was when I was taken to heaven for eight hours. Right? Then I saw my calling at the age of 13 that I was going to be a preacher. I saw people going to hell, including some of my relatives. Hallelujah. I was with the Holy Ghost. I monopolized the Holy Ghost today. He came to me and began to give me understanding. Trying to whisper. I want to assure you that I don't know the Bible, but the Holy Ghost that I work with does. Hey! You say, have you considered the scripture? He will quote the scripture. I don't know what the scripture is saying. Then I trace it. Ah! Then the discussion continues. Even in the bathroom, he's speaking. When you are putting on your shoe, he's, he, he's very loud. He's even loud. So you spend more time. You put it on, you remove it. So that if, if the shoe is what is encouraging him to speak, remain there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Amen. So the vision that God had for Israel was that he wanted to fructify a nation of priests. Not a nation of education. Not a nation of philosophy. Not a nation of trade and investment. But a nation of what? Priests. That was God's concept. That was God's design for the nation of Israel. And any time Israel begins to fulfill any other thing that is contrary to this vision. It, it may even be an economic explosion that is responsible for the departure. That departure is a state of ailment because the nation is beginning to fulfill something that is contrary to God's blueprint for the land. Do you understand that? Do you realize that an individual can be wealthy in the eyes of men, successful, and everything he is is a departure from what God intended him to be, he's in a state of ailment. Are you there? Are you there? It means that some forces other than the Holy Ghost have, have aided him to go in the wrong direction fast. So you need to be careful what you call success. You need to be careful what you call prosperity. It might be chains and prison houses, fetters and bounds, that you call success. And when men hail you, do not respond. Because none of them is your creator. You can never succeed until you stand before the judgment seat of Christ and receive thumbs up from Jesus. Every other thing you do. Huh? Are you there? So don't get excited for the wrong reasons. I went somewhere and some people tried to make me important. Meanwhile, they were not aware that I was before Jesus to get a scorecard of my level of compliance. Are you there? And I had not finished, he had not given, finished giving me the feedback. I was still in the process of seeking his mind, seeking how he views me, how he views my efforts towards extending his influence upon the face of the earth. I was still in that process. And then some people wanted to make me a celebrity. Now, if you are not careful, if you are not careful, you will be derailed. You will be walking in the wrong direction fast. And it, it, when, you are, when they look at you from heaven, you are far away from what God had in mind. So God had a vision for Israel, a nation, a kingdom of priests. Now, this is the meaning, the simple meaning of the kingdom of priests is that everyone that is an Israelite will be in the service of God. Now, the idea of priesthood is to serve God's will, give God an opportunity to express himself. That's what priesthood is about. We give God an opportunity. For instance, prayer is earthly permission for heavenly interference. When we begin to labor in prayer, we give God an opportunity to express himself. So if the Bible is saying that God ordained the nation of Israel to be a kingdom of priests, he's saying that each and every one of us is going to be in the service of God. Now, in this little building here, 
How many of you are civil servants? You work for the Benin State Government or for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. If you are in this room and you work for the government, either at the federal level or at the state level. Let me see your hand. So we have a few people working for the federal government, state government, and listen. So you can see that the people working for the government are few compared to we that are not in direct service to the government. Now, the idea God had was that everyone would be a functionary in Israel in the matter of the service to God. Is that clear? So it's a kingdom of priests. So each one must understand the gates to which he is assigned, the unique duty that God has assigned him and he preoccupies himself in fulfilling that duty. That's the idea of the nation that God conceived concerning Israel. That everyone will be in the Lord's service. And that's why I taught you, I said there's a difference between your job and your work. Your job pays you salaries. Your work pays you rewards. Your job is temporary, is earthly. Your work will pave your way for you in eternity. It's an investment into the window of eternity from time. I also told you that if you are wise, you will use the proceeds that you make from your job to sponsor what? Your work. I was aware of my mission very early. I think my first angelic encounter was at the age of seven. I will never forget that. Then the second angelic encounter was at the age of 13. That was when I was taken to heaven for eight hours. Right? Then I saw my calling at the age of 13 that I was going to be a preacher. I saw people going to hell, including some of my relatives. And I told the angel that was taking me round the heavens. The, I know the part of heaven I saw very clearly, very vividly. And I can describe it. I can draw it. I can show you how that part of heaven looks like it is still fresh on my mind. But God has not given me the liberty to speak so much about this encounter. I saw the angels that, walk, that fought for my deliverance. Because according to the angels uh, that was giving me information, he was in custody of a scroll and my life was that, was that scroll. And he was reading it to me. According to that angel, I was supposed to die at the age of 13. That the reason why I'm here is because they just rescued me from death. And there were four of them that were responsible. Four angels, one of which whose head was high up into the heavens. I'll never forget that. Are you with me? I saw things that God has not allowed me to speak about. So I knew I was a preacher. It's also interesting to know that I was warned from that place. Now that my life was rescued and I was going to come back into the earth to fulfill my mission, and they showed me the mission. Are you there? So it means that my life on earth doesn't have any meaning apart from what? Mission. You can get, get involved in business and start a nightclub and put red lights and you boogie. You, you see, hey, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you will need help quickly because anything that doesn't strike a chord with what was written in the original documents in eternity what in fact it doesn't exist you can, you can even become the president and rig your way into as a rock and speak big things speak big things but <laughs> if it was not written concerning you at the end of the day, it is you that lost. So I was privileged to see the end of life. And I now realized what was important. It was to fulfill the mandate on the heart of God. That there is no other excuse to give that you did not fulfill that thing that will pass. Are you there? And the Lord warned me when I came back. Because I was rescued from death. I was given another chance and all of that took place. 
at the age of 13. I was a young lad, but I understood clearly everything that happened. Meanwhile, in the natural, my mom, being a nurse, I had high fever. She had struggled with all of her tools to get me to resuscitate me, and that it wasn't possible. I came back on my own accord. I saw the other side. Are you with me? I was warned. Jesus warned me before he released my spirit to come into my body. He warned, and the way I knew it was for eight, eight hours because I, a clock, do you understand? I was lying this way. A clock was this way. So I knew when I vanished from here, I knew what it, the time was. Do you understand? And then when I came back to consciousness, the first thing I saw in consciousness was, so I, I did the math. That's why I say it's eight hours. Are you there? So when I got back, when I was going back, uh, meanwhile, I made it to heaven for your information. I, I was there with Jesus. <laughs> At 13, I made it. <laughs> I was there with Jesus. We were moving around, and it was a great experience, great experience. Hallelujah. But I, I think a, a time will come when the Lord will give me um, the utterance to discuss those things. Maybe when I'm much older, when I'm really going, then I'll say, all right, you come. Let's talk. But I, I'm going to, I still have so much time. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> if you meet the people that hate me on the streets, tell them that he said he's still around. <laughs> so, so when I came back, before I, I got back into my body, Jesus said, if you ever test of sexual immorality, you come back home. That is me. He told me now. So, in my own eye, there was nothing else that was sinful. The, the, ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate sin <laughs> was sexual immorality. Because Jesus told me that the mercy that I am squandering in coming back to this life that mercy will be exhausted the day I attempt what? Session. And it will interest you to know that I've been tempted in that area a lot. But the words of Jesus have been my protection. May you have the voice of God locking in your brain, in your head, to keep you from straying from the path in the name of Jesus Christ. Even as a married man, you are going to be tempted in that way. Even as a preacher, people see you burning with fire. <laughs> you are an endangered species. There are, are those that will believe that life for them has been made if they have a moment with you. But Jesus told me, if you become loose and you violate this matter, you will come back. So I, I knew that. It's not enough to hear a pastor. You need to hear Jesus. You need to hear him. Because you are likely to stray on the path of destiny and become involved with things that do not strike a chord in eternity if you do not hear the voice of Jesus. Hello. Thanks for watching. I believe you've been blessed. Please like share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. God bless you.